Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we will reconvene the uh, 2018 budget hearings. It is November 14th, uh, 2017, and I will um, turn it over to our distinguished panel of guests from the prosecutor's office. Good morning, President Benton, Commissioners. Uh, we are here. Um, we have presented a budget for review and hopefully approval, and here to answer any questions. However, before we begin that, I would like to note that, um, as usual, we will be returning funds this year. It's not as much as in last year's, previous years, but we are returning some funds to the general um, fund. Also. A, um, one of our duties is to pursue bonds that have been forfeited for bail. And in 2016, we were able to um, have a bond returned to the county for $150,000. This will be paid over installments, I believe. Oh, we have received all of it this year? Yeah. Uh, so we received 150000 in bonds, bonds forfeited that went to the general fund. We also have a couple others that we are currently looking at. So we, we are continuing to pursue avenues uh, for revenue for both our office and the county. We also, of course, have pursued a number of um, various um, Grants that are out there. We currently have a fellow, another fellow from the Ohio State University, where Ohio State pays most of his salary. We have put him in the civil division. And as usual, um, a large portion of our victim services folks are paid with a grant from the state, which allows us to uh, assist the victims in the county which is a, both a constitutional mandate under the Ohio Constitution and a statutory mandate under the law. So I am open for questions. Whether they provide funding or not, it's a statutory requirement? Yes, it is a statutory requirement. And, and as you know, it passed. Well, there already were victim notification requirements and other victim uh, services that were required by the Constitution. With the passing of Marcy's Law, that has kicked up a little bit. Um, and additionally, it's also in statute, a number of the things we have to do. So we, we rely heavily on our victim services staff to notify victims, to keep them apprised of the dates of everything that's going on, to set up meetings, to sit in with meetings. I, th I think the initial idea behind victim advocates was to help the victims through the process and with the passage of the original constitutional amendment as well as the statute, they have also become clerical in nature in that they are doing a lot of um, sending out letters, writing letters, setting up meetings. <clears throat> so on top of their, their basic empathic victim services, they're also doing the clerical, that administrative that's helpful. Uh, what was the, the bond you mentioned? The um, this was a bond in the case of uh, <laughs> State v. Salam Najmuddin, and it was a $150,000 bond through a bail bondsman, um, e-bail bond LLC, and uh, Mr. Najmuddin did not comply with the terms of his release. In fact, I think he fled the jurisdiction, and we... Uh, um, Collective from the bonding company? Yes. Collective from the bonding company? Okay. So he didn't comply, therefore the money's owed because he didn't comply? Yes, I think he left. Does that, does that happen very often? Um, it happens it, it happens more than we would like it to. A lot, of time, it, a lot of this depends on whether or not the judge is willing to forfeit the bond, and sometimes he is, and sometimes, sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. Through a bail bondsman, usually people put up their houses. Sometimes the judge, judges have a little bit of um, concern if it's a mother who puts up her house for her. Why? Son. Why? They, they should understand going into I, it. Right. <laughs> I agree, but um, there is always that. So this gentleman you're talking about, is he 
leave the country and he's gone, or did they would keep we find him? And I believe he's gone, and I do not know where he is. Um, I th yeah, he's still he. There's a warrant issued. But even if he's bond. found, the bond's still forfeited Correct. because yeah. he does not get the bond back. So he owes the bonding company. Right, he owes the bonding company. That's they're in business to keep that risk. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. That's why usually they find them. Just <laughs> <laughs> understand the yeah. obvious. <laughs> Uh, I have a, I, I, in reading your material here, uh, it wasn't really like in a column where it could easily count, but it looks like uh, two or three positions depending on how you count. Is that what you're asking for? Um, actually, we're, we're asking for one position. What we have right now, um, we are asking for the civil position that is currently being held by the fellow and will be paid by that, by the fellowship through September of next year. However, um, when we hired, when we hired, when we accepted him as our fellow, um, we made it very clear that the position we have open is civil. And as you know, our civil division has grown tremendously since I've been prosecutor. And it, as the county grows, so grows the need for our civil division. We currently have at least four clients who are asking for uh, attorneys to be assigned solely to them, uh, which is not possible when we tell them it's not possible. But um, the need is there. And with our county growing the way it is, with our townships exploding and all the development, um, and if you look at the number of hours and the amount of time, Civil staff is putting in a week. Um, it justifies hiring an additional civil. So you're saying you're asking for one new position? Yes. Now, by, by my definition, the, the fellow position, which I would call a grant or something, uh, I've always, I, I'll give you my. You've heard it. I've heard it. You, it's so, a grant. So, 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 devil, so devil's advocate, you need to help me understand. Because my biggest fear is these grants, right. and then, and it's a, it's a game. It's a, an addiction that stay or they try to. I, mean, I hate to use that word, but it makes my point. It gets you addicted to having that person. Money goes away, and you still keep the person. Right. And that bothers me. Well, and I'll tell you how we've done it in the past. This is our fourth fellow. With each fellow, someone has left, so we have hired the previous three. So it was not a new position. But if going forward the county funds the fellow position, it's really a new position. We, we would be asking for that position, whether or not there was a fellow in that position at this point in time. That was our plan, because OSU had told us last year that last year's fellow was going to be our last fellow, and then in July said, hey, do you want another fellow? <laughs> Since we were coming here, to ask you for that additional civil position anyway. I believe Chris was begging me um, for that position. Eric was sort of not far behind him. Um, we, we said we would take that position knowing that we would put the fellow in the civil position. Um, whether or not he is hired depends on how he does in the course of his term. He, he is being sworn in, to, he was sworn in who sworn in yesterday? Yesterday, he'll be sworn into our office and then, tomorrow. Yeah, he'll be sworn in by me tomorrow. But you're wanting, whenever this position, sometime next year, you're going to want a fellow that will not be correct, not be paid through the fellowship. But but that was not. We didn't. We're not asking for that position because we have a fellow in that position. We're asking for that position because the the civil division is in need of. So a just position. so that's the one position yes. you're asking for. Yes, we're not asking for the fellow and another attorney. We're asking. Yeah. That's where I was asking. Right. I, I, frankly, I read the the essay and it was a little confusing. Uh, well, I think when we wrote it, we didn't know we were getting a fellow. <laughs> okay. So there is there is a, a fellow or a gal, but right, right. So, well, yeah. The fellowship. Yeah, that's being silly. <laughs> Okay, just summarizing one position is what you're asking. Yes. Um, the civil, what, what are the, why are the civil cases up and what do they typically involve? Um, what, what the, does the your civil staff do? 
And it's not always cases. I mean, our numbers are up tremendously because whenever a township has a question, they contact us. And generally, if it's not a previous matter, we open a new case on that. So it's not like a criminal matter. If you see a hard case there, it'll be questions. Um, because of the amount of litigation and just growth and zoning in the township, yeah. um, it would be that, that Chris and Eric would handle all the township stuff and uh, for example, Mark Fowler was at a township meeting last night, and um, a couple townships we go to. Meetings, there always seems to be something where they need legal advice. Um, Board of Elections, whenever there's a, a disputed elections or highly contested elections, they require a lot of legal advice. Um, so, so this is mainly supporting the townships and the agencies? Well, keeping in mind that we're the statutory attorney for all elected officials, we're the statutory attorney for all boards, the townships, and then a number of other boards. I think we counted 75, and I'm not sure if we're counting under each township. We have the township, the zoning, the, um, fire, the, the fire folks, um, School, school, the schools, fiscal. fiscal, fiscal officer. So we have. I mean, they, they're it's okay. exponential. Brown Township would be an example, I suppose. Yes, Brown Township has um, been extremely busy in the last year. <laughs> so, so what do the matters typically involve with with the, the bulk of the or thirteen hundred cases last year? Um, most of them would probably involve questions that arise, um, you know, really, I hate to say, there's really not a typical matter, but it'll be a township trustee calling and asking questions on behalf of the board. It could be the fire um, departments calling because we represent all those. Board of Elections, um, it's a continuing support. It's all the contracts that um, each township, each board. Uh, DD has um, a number of issues that goes on. We, we deal on some level with personnel. We don't handle any type of bargaining because we don't have any money that We don't handle any organization. Cases, but they they don't seem to want to let us handle very much. Uh, to this point, um, being a trustee for seven years, it's very prudent on the behalf for the township to ask for for legal advice. Um, unfortunately, things have become even more and more litigious in, in townships, depending upon the township. Sometimes it's a trustee who doesn't seem to get along with others. Other times it's uh, uh, just citizens who are trying to do their due diligence, they raise different questions, and uh, the trustees need the backup of and, and the advice of uh, the prosecutor. I know so often in Genoa, uh, you know, on zoning issues, zoning issues were huge because there was uh, always somebody opposed to a CVS that was go going to go in on a on a busy corner, but then there were homes nearby, and so uh, a lot of citizen meetings. And to have a prosecutor there to make sure that we conducted those zoning hearings properly was was really very important, so we could avoid any future litigation. So, and and you know, seeing how this just blossomed from the time that that I was, you know, began as a trustee, and and you know, then I haven't been there for the last three years. But uh, it's it's I I know all the times that we in Genoa uh, uh, worked closely with the prosecutor's office. It was a great help to us, and we had trustees who got along. It, it has not slowed down. I will tell you, I believe the client 
who we have responded to the most this year in 2016, I believe, was the sheriff. Ah, okay. Um, they have a lot of issues on a, on a regular basis. And this is what I always tell my clients. Please don't think it's okay to go ahead and ask for forgiveness because it's much easier yeah. to talk to me beforehand than to deal with me after. Um, and so a lot of, and so we encourage that. And one of, one of the ways we've tried to proactively deal with issues that come up for the townships is to hold township training every other year. So we, we make that available. We also offer to go out and, and um, educate townships. We go to the township meetings. We just, the township association meetings, we try to make sure we're, we're available because it's easier to deal with the problem on the front end than on the back end. I went to that a couple of years ago. It was interesting and very well attended. Yes. I think yes, they, they understand good. it's it's an important area for them. This Saturday. Yeah, yeah, great. This is our township training for 2017. Well, uh, on, on the civil front, I mean, the, the caseload has, has gone up by 800 since 2010, but foreclosures have gone down by 800 since 2010. So... Foreclosures are part of that number, though. So the 1,300, I believe. They're not... They're separate line. Well, they're separate line in here. I assume they really mean um, a subset I, of the... We didn't bring that with us. I apologize. The numbers um, in foreclosures have gone down, which is a very good thing. Yeah, right, so right. It's a good thing for everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and foreclosures, um, thank you, Sai. Foreclosures have, have gone down, which is which is good because what it means is the county is doing well financially. Um, it's also bad because we don't get as much DTAC money, which causes problems in other parts of the budget because we've been utilizing. <coughs> Yeah, and the foreclosures are a lot of administrative work and not so much attorney work. The attorneys approve everything and look at everything, but it's 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 a paperwork. Okay. Um, Nineteen percent increase in salary is a huge increase, and I mean our revenue at the county level is growing probably three percent. Um, you know, I mean, it, it just the reality of the of the economics are that our revenues are growing from maybe three to four percent, and a nineteen percent increase in the main component of your budget is very difficult to to accommodate. Obviously, and, and part of that is when we when we talked three years ago about the budgets and we had phased in a fifteen thousand raise over three years. This is the last of the three years. And then that was one of my questions: Was what are the components of of the nineteen percent? I know you get an increase statutory. I, I get an increase. It's my um, second one since I've been there. <laughs> it's uh, <coughs> your increase, but this this raise plan that we instituted three years ago to get right. equity among the the staff, and then just the regular raises, and then the staff adds. I think are the right. four components. I'm just curious of the details of each of those four pieces. Nicole, do you know? Everybody's getting the 3% raise that was recommended by the commissioners, and the only additional is the 5000 for the attorneys. How many attorneys does that include? That includes 17. Two, Sorry, 15 attorneys. I accidentally counted oh, the Carol. 5, yes. So we have 7 to 15? You said 15? <coughs> 15 attorneys. Who are getting the 5,000? Who are getting the additional 5,000? Those are the, those oh. are the only in, um, increases that we did were the standard 3% that was recommended by the commissioners and then the 5,000. The supplemental the pay equity adjustment. But, the, um, but there's... I mean, there's there's two other components. I mean, there's your raise, and then the the uh, staff ads. 
Are you talking about the difference in the ask from the from the? Yeah, I'm just saying salaries are up 19 percent, three percent is the across the board increase. It's there are three other pieces. It's the civil additional civil attorney that we discussed. Right. The five thousand raise for the attorneys that was discussed four years ago, the three percent that the commissioners recommended. And then the prosecutors. And this, the statutory prosecutors increase. Right. These these attorneys are they going to get the three percent plus the five thousand? They do. We That's it's the three the five thousand was something that was discussed that was we were and we did the salary surveys, and it was discussed that the fifteen thousand all at once would not be reasonable, and that we would do the five thousand for three years to get them to just. Basically, the it was comparables, the comparable attorneys, so we weren't losing people um, as we had. And then um, the three percent is exactly what the commissioners had recommended. So to take that away just because they're receive, they're, we're trying to get them to the comparable attorneys doesn't seem reasonable. We also, and and part of the issue may be that we had been paying some of our our attorneys. Out of the DTAC fund, uh, the what fund? Uh, delinquent tax. Oh, okay, sure. Fund, uh, because they'd been working on the foreclosures. We paid some of the staff out of that, and that we are not paying as much out of this year because, with the foreclosures down, that amount is down also. And we want to keep a at least something a cushion in there um, if we have to pay any. We are still using that to some extent. Um, we did not. The grant, the drug grant, is has been history for the last. We haven't received that for the last two years. Last year, and probably this four year. years. Four years. Yeah. I thought we'd received it more than that, but um, so that and, and applying for that, the amount we would get isn't justified by the paperwork that it requires and the way it prohibits us from utilizing the drug, our drug prosecutor in other areas. So in the past, if you look at what she's talking about, the delinquent tax is what we receive from the foreclosures. Um, if you look at the previous three years, we would, we budgeted around uh, 250,000. Uh, next year, we only budgeted for 100,000. And that um, that solely paid for civil attorneys. It was, like she said, a big portion of our civil attorneys. Yeah. So now we're having to move them to our general fund to pay for them due to us not receiving the funds in foreclosures. You know, our challenge is there's about $10, $11 million in request over, <laughs> and obviously that doesn't balance, so we have to make some hard decisions. Right. We understand. We don't have to like it, but we understand. <laughs> it's reality. But I think I think that's where that's where it bumps it up. The percentage bumps up is because we're asking for more from the general fund than we used in the in the from the DTAC. But if you also look at, um, I guess, materials, supplies, just our general office upkeep. I can almost guarantee that that is extremely low compared to any other county office. Our our budget <coughs> is solely salaries and insurance. So we do a lot in our office to try to keep everything else at a very low cost so that we can um, justify the 3% raises. and getting our attorneys up to a comparable rate so that we don't lose staff. I'm going to pay you a compliment. You ought to be an attorney. I'm sorry? <laughs> you ought to be an attorney. You, 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 is, is that a compliment? <laughs> it was a compliment. I, I meant it as a compliment. You're, you're a good salesman in behalf of your department. I, I respect that and appreciate that. So, well done is what I'm trying to say. Um, have you factored in any vacancies into the uh, – Salary budget? We currently have one uh, position that's vacant that we will be hiring in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, but we did not uh, factor in losing anybody. 
Yeah, and then the reason I bring that up is you've consistently run under budget for the last three years. And it's you know, and that's generally because of vacancies, inevitably. Right. Somebody's I mean, not there the whole year. Um, we never factor in losing anyone. <laughs> that's that's not what we want to do is have to lose. Um, no, I understand. I understand. And I'm it's normally always it's normally attorneys. But as an accounting as an accounting function, as a budgeting tool, it, it, it's traditional in the private sector that you would uh, you're never fully. Generally, a department is never fully staffed the entire year, and so during the year there will be some ebb and flow to that. So it's not unusual that uh, you kind of take that into the budget consideration, and because of that, it helps with the numbers that we're talking well, about. Well, and in our problem, for example, this year we may be. Maybe if you start with November 1st as the as the day because the person left in mid October and has two weeks of vacation, so maybe maybe six weeks it, vacancy, and um, with the salary bumps, people aren't as willing you know on a bad day to say I can go make more money somewhere else. Um, they realize that the pay here is fair. And, and they're going to stay. So we're, and there are so many people out there looking for attorney positions that are vacancy. We should be able to keep them, and frankly, for the, for our projects and our assignments, should keep it at almost minimal. At, should keep it minimal if none. Um. And the judges have indicated that they are going to be running three courtrooms at times so um, I'll be spending more time in the courtroom but we have um, because of the new courthouse which is lovely thank you all <laughs> uh, on, on, on behalf of the anxiety I had about safety thank you um, we now have three courtrooms that can run trials full jury trials and then we have hearing rooms that are big enough to run bench trials or so the judges have indicated that there may be times when they're running more than two courtrooms. So um, you said, well, I was talking about the budget and the yeah. $10 million plus, and you said you understood. So if you're sitting up here mm -hmm. and we're sitting down there, what would you cut to help with that? Nothing. Yeah, I, I, I our, our, we are with our attorneys, I provide comp, comp, comp time. We don't have overtime for our attorneys. Most of our attorneys are running eight to ten weeks of comp time that, frankly, they never get to use. We have a couple attorneys who are losing vacation on a regular basis because they just don't have time to take vacation. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. We have one attorney that's lost vacation for six years. Okay, we're trying to put a budget in balance here, so. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I guess that would be the comment is just think about it. You know. Yeah, the, I guess I would say um, if, you know, salary or if the budget does get cut and we lose an attorney position, the county is going to be the one that's, I mean, going to be the one that suffers. Um, Could you tell us on the um, on the criminal side what type of cases have become and I think I <coughs> I don't know the answer to this but but the but, most the most yes, the most frequent the most yeah um, and you, you have you have a couple levels of cases. You have your your lower level felonies that come in, and those are going to be your thefts, your drug cases. Um, domestic violence is also lower level at a certain point. Mm -hmm. So those come in, and a lot of those will plead. And what we're seeing the cases that go to trial are the cases that involve uh, allegations of sexual assaults on children and adults. Um, cases that are the high-level drug trafficking cases. Oh, okay. We will see cases that um, 
are, and I say convoluted, where they have a lot of moving parts. For example, we had a case that involved break-ins of humane societies, which on its face may not seem like it's that big of a case, but it involved humane societies in six different counties, um, all these different dates, and then you're calling in people from mm -hmm. the phone company to talk about towers. You're bringing in the folks from all the um, all the humane societies. You're bringing in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. from So your RICO, your uh, racketeering cases, engaging in corrupt practices act cases, um, trafficking and um, sexual assault cases are probably the ones that go to trial. What we're seeing a lot of are at the lower level are the cases motivated by the op opioid crisis, mm -hmm. the break-ins, the yeah. car thefts, credit card mm -hmm. usage, which can blossom into uh, engaging. And, and then I noticed, too, the number of, of crime victims is up yes. quite significantly, actually. Well, what we're seeing a lot more of when you're dealing with uh, folks who have an underlying drug addiction, it's not just one person that they're victimizing. They'll steal a number of credit cards and okay. then try to use them all when each credit card has an underlying victim. Mm -hmm. Or they'll break into numerous homes. For example, and last year my my neighborhood experienced a series of break-ins. I think there were 12 houses that were broken into, and so each of those have at least one, if not two, victims. Mm -hmm. And each of those victims requires, by law, notification, mm -hmm. um, ability to come to the hearing, explanation of what's going on at the hearings and the trials. And under the new law, it's going to be even more. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and getting to the constitutional amendment that was just approved, um, is that, what, what are the practical effects? Practical effect, effects of that is now uh, victims have to be notified of their rights by law enforcement with first contact with law enforcement. So that's going to require more work on behalf of the sheriff. Um, which pretty much means we're going to be getting uh, training for the sheriff and, and Genoa Township Police Department. Uh -huh. It will require um, <clears throat> potentially more hearings <coughs> because the victim is allowed to interpose into hearings and allowed to have counsel present and allowed to ask for various other um, other situations. For example, if the victim doesn't want to go to an interview, if the victim doesn't want to turn over evidence, those are going to be n more hearings that mm -hmm. we're going to be involved in. And it, instead of two attorneys, prosecutor and defense attorney, we're not going to have victim's counsel. I see. Also, right. You know, um, there's other requirements that I, I, I know are out there. And sure. 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 Right. To to ensure victims' rights, and I know, even though that was part of the Constitution, this certainly it does add additional, and and that's probably good. But yet, it puts more burden. Yeah, it puts more. And one of the other things it did was expanded the definition of victim. Oh, okay. So where it used to be, if someone uh, caused the well. It expands it to anyone who may have suffered as a result of the crime. So when you're looking, where as before you would have one person, maybe the spouse of someone, now you'd have to let the spouse, the children, anyone else who came forward to say, well, I really suffered because of this scenario. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, that's, that's interesting. That's one thing we haven't considered yet since it was just passed. Yes. And it's effective 90 days. Uh huh. Effective 90. Okay. Thank you. You do a great job. Thank you have an excellent you. staff. Well, I, have, I have a wonderful staff. You, you really do. <laughs> you really do. Kyle is quiet. Any, any <laughs> additional <laughs> comments? The first uh, assistant prosecuting attorney. <laughs> I have an on-budget question, and yes. you're here, so I just take advantage of it. 
I want to be very generic in how I ask it, but there's been some situations where um, within a, a, say, a township where advice has been given to some lower level party in that township, and then the township's asked for help, and we say we can't provide because we're giving advice to someone else. You, you have a vague idea what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, my, my question is, why would we look to the administrator of that township or the president of the trustees if it's not an administrator and let them direct us before we give advice at a lower level to avoid that conflict? Um, usually what happens is the the administrator, well, first off, not all townships have administrators. Well, I said, or the president of the board. Um, president of the board um, sometimes and in most of these times has has okayed the communication between the prosecutor's office and the employee. And usually when it's a low-level employee, I think you're talking about, for example, uh, a zoning administrator. The problem there is, by statute, we are a zoning administrator's attorney. So it's not up to the board to make that determination. That it, it's not exactly the um, best way to provide legal advice it, that, as it's set out in the statute because it's it's inherent for conflicts to occur. I, if we talk to zoning and then the Board of Trustees says, oh, we don't want to do it that way, and there's a lawsuit, we have an issue automatically, and we can't, we can't after we talk to the zoning administrator or the board, um, then tell the commissioners, um, well, you should vote this way because we can't tell them how to do things and we can't um, because of the training. Actually, my example was non-zoning that I have in mind. But uh, uh, a lot of times what happens is when they have a question, um, we've, we've been through the communication. We'll, we'll talk to the boards of trustees and say, who is your point person? Who can we talk to? Because we do not represent each individual person, like we don't represent each of you. So when we respond to a question, it's, it's to the board. It's to the board of county commissioners. Um, and so usually what's happened is the board of trustees has said, you can go ahead and talk to them and deal with their issues. And again, that's coming on the other end. Otherwise, they have to wait till a meeting. In the smaller counties, you have one meeting a month, and it, it slows things down. Let's take, again, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm really seeking information. I don't really have it. Uh, it it's sometimes been frustrating when a higher level in that township can't be represented because advice has been given to a lower representative in that township. My question was where there are administrators. If it kind of flowed through the administrator right. and they were aware and they say it's okay to provide it or we'd rather you not, is that is that make sense or not? Yeah, That's no, a question. And, and, and most of the times when we get questions, it is through the administrator. Sometimes it sneaks through that it's not, and sometimes it's one of those on the fly, hey, what about? And and maybe that's something we need to work on is, you know, if there's a question, let's make sure it's coming through the administrator. Yeah, that's an observation. I could give you more specifics, but I think you probably know what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, just uh, it's, it's, it seems if it goes to the administrator, there's really it's better managed is what I guess the point I'm trying yeah, to make. That, that is a good point because you do have uh, sometimes we've yeah. certainly this is it's happened where someone picks up the phone calls the prosecutor's office and uh, and then I know we've had to say wait a minute <coughs> that's not the way we do it that right. you know but yet the calls already been made so we try you know that's something that does need to be controlled though at the township level and then you say you can't represent the township because you had to give advice at a lower level yeah it kind of it seems backwards well and a lot of times if we can't represent the township um, but that's been the reason. That's been the reason given why you couldn't represent the townships. Reason. Yeah. And we can talk in more depth. Okay. Yeah. Other questions, comments, Sai? Anything at this point? No. Um, okay. I, I guess we'll wrap it up. So but I yeah, one thanks. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Um, so, kind of the question back on you guys: What do? Um, what would you guys suggest that we cut? Uh, 
I don't think we're the... Yes, we promised to do it. No. <laughs> just, I'm, just, well, I'm, just, I'm just coming back to you with the same question because yeah, I'm I, curious to what you guys would expect us to cut. I would not I, want I you to cut any, the attorney who, you, who you're planning on hiring. I mean, when you get down to cutting attorneys, when you've got such a, uh, you've got a tight run ship there, and, and I mean, I've seen enough on the other side that through familiarity with stepping up in the prosecutor's office, the sheriff's office, uh, corrections. I mean, there's a lot going on in Delaware County. We cannot afford to cut back on, on uh, the number of prosecutors that we have. I'll say it this way. Everyone who sits in those chairs would say the same thing. We can't afford to make cuts. The reality is we have to, we have to make cuts. And we'll, we, have to, we have to make some tough decisions at some point in the next three or four weeks. Um, and I don't think we really can tell you what that is right now because we need to hear from everybody and everybody makes their case. I've already told you you did a great job. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, numbers have to, the numbers have to work. So if we don't cut here, obviously we have to cut somewhere else and maybe more deeply. So, uh, yeah, And I wouldn't pretend to prioritize your spending for you because you know your department a whole lot better than – your office a whole lot better than I do, so I, I couldn't begin to tell you you got to cut this or that. You know, that and, that's and not our position. We, we have not increased admin staff. Um, in we, the only thing we've done is decreased admin staff because of my position. Right. Well, when Nicole came on, we took three positions and made it one. Um, <laughs> and then I know we made the full time. So that added eight hours, and that's been four or five years ago. We have not added admin staff, except maybe Mary's position at part-time, but that was three years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. So, and she serves more as a floater people than I do. Well, she, she works as a drug. She's only part-time, but she'll fill in if we have an admin who's out on extended leave. And again, you guys do a great job. It's just that we have fiscal realities that we have to deal with. So again, thank you. Um, any other comments? Yeah. Okay, we'll keep working at it. Thank you, thank thank you very you much. Guys. Thanks for coming over. All right. Ten thirty is the next one. Yeah, ten thirty is. I'm an Judge. Recess till 10.30? Yeah. Okay.